All right. Ne- the next one is the very safe name of Evan Williams. Evan. Evan Williams. Uh, they're claiming we we've had Evan Williams on the show before, but before. it didn't make it to the um, didn't make it to the uh, podcast. I mean, it hasn't made it to the channel yet. The seventeen or the small bird. Mm. So that was for the bargain under thirty dollars. So that that's a, another episode Look coming that. to you soon. It's coming to you soon. But we got so many episodes. It's ridiculous. Yeah, they're just all sitting in the vault. Stock it's power. ridiculous. We gotta wait till you viewers so ask for it. That's when we put it out. Supply and demand. <laughs> so stupid. It's Supply funny. and demand. <laughs> so Evan Williams uh, again, one of the bargain bourbons on the market in a few different expressions. But this is their bottled and bond expression. I always, I see this as a mixer. Change my mind about that real quick. Is Evan Williams hundred proof? Yes. Bottom, you had this before. I've had Evan Williams before. I don't know if I've had hundred proof. Yeah. I would like to say that Evan Williams comes in the Jack Daniels esque bottle. Yeah. And I hope it does not taste Jack Daniels esque. Mm. Yeah. So this was. This had the distinct honor of in 2018. I just find this to be amusing. I don't know why. Uh-oh. It was Nerd voted. Jokes. It was it was uh, voted best of the best by the American Bus Drivers Association. Bus drivers. So they drinking while they take my kids home. Hell, I, I don't know what they kind lit, of I don't know what lit. kind of buses we're talking about. This? That one on the you know what I mean the bus driver on the Simpsons. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's, that's the one so, that comes. To I don't mind. know what kind of buses. American so, Bus Association. This is what happens. You pay your fare <laughs> under the seat, and he like. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, if they don't shut that baby up in the back, I'll kill everybody. <laughs> so, what bus- does, I was looking, I was noticing the bottle. Uh, People in the bus this, industry love this. What does charcoal? What does charcoal filtered mean? So charcoal filter. So yeah, Let me see the bottle. For this, so this is an interesting one in that it's uh, off the the distilleries on the Ohio River. So you have two sort of non Kentucky. Uh, 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 well, that one is Kentucky, but it's just off the Ohio River. Ooh. But you have two mm-hmm. interesting bottles. So that is charcoal filtered, like typical Tennessee whis- whiskey is charcoal filtered. In that, uh, it is when it comes off the still before it goes into a barrel, it's filtered through charcoal and then it hits the barrel. Hey, okay, so let me ask: you, is 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 Tennessee a hotbed for uh, charcoal? Like, is that where like they came up with? I was a coal miner's daughter. Like, well, yeah, this is one that, is filtered through charcoal. Right. I don't, I don't think this one is filtered through. Charcoal. Oh, I, I was, was just explaining. No, no, I might have got. Okay, yeah, I might have right. got. A, I might have. Yeah. Oh, this one is charcoal. Yeah, that's okay. all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. But, that, but that's Kentucky. So that's that takes away everything yeah. I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, this bottle has a lot going on. So okay, we got the charcoal filter. We have the hundred proof. We have the bottled and bond. And on the other side, we have the genuine sour mash. What yeah. does that mean for our newbies? So a lot of uh, most bourbons are made for sour mash, but it just became famous because Jack Daniels put it on their bottle. What makes a mash sour? Sour, sour mash. That, that, is it the, it, it the taste is, thing or is it a process thing? The fermentation, I think. Yeah, it's the fermentation. Oh, boy, I was in a distillery that, that last. Yeah, I was in a distillery last week, and you kind of get that smell. And I was looking at a mash. Prior to going on um, still, okay, and I mean that thing was rocking. Stank. It was th- it smelled, but you, like there's so much movement and motion in those big vats where they're, they're creating, the bubbling and creating that ethanol, the alcohol, because yep. the yeast is eating up all those. Did they, why did, did they why didn't we get that footage of Bourbon Brain in the distillery for our viewers? I because he was naked and didn't have any pants on. <laughs> so were, <laughs> you, su- about, were you supposed to be I'm in the t- distillery? I'm <laughs> telling you, he was in there like this. <laughs> <laughs> bourbon. <laughs> He was like, I just want to touch my dick. Uh, bourbon, bourbon. Is, is that the mash? You didn't censor that. You censored whatever you were going to say the other side, but you that didn't, you didn't censor that. Let it go. Let that it was go. That was going to be terrible. Jesus Y'all got any dick in here? No, I'm, I'm doing an intern of uh, an internship at a distillery right now because oh, I'm in the process. I'm trying to open to my tell. own. So I'm right now. I'm doing the. Well, I'm working nights. That part you mm-hmm. don't want them to know that part. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was, yeah. It was but awesome. but please do tell us um, the experience of going through the distillery while we try to taste this. Yeah, I mean, it's just I'm, I'm just doing all the the, the shoulders down like a pedophile to labor feel labor at yeah. this point, right? Well, I, would say I a lot do a of, little. A lot of our viewers are never getting an opportunity to go into the distillery for a while. They listen to our podcast enough; they're going to get that interest peak. But mm-hmm. a lot of people never have a chance to go into the process where a lot of this alcohol is made. So I think any insight that we can give them. Of the, you know the behind yeah. the scenes type stuff they gonna love that. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll I'll talk to the owner and see if I can yeah. can record a little bit. But but out of respect for him because he's doing Absolutely. me a favor, let me yeah. uh, learn the ropes. I haven't been recording any of that stuff. Okay. But yes, it the, from that fermentation you get it a whole different. But they don't stir it. There's no stirring process inside that vat. It's just it's natural. Blip, 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 blip. Yeah, it is the way the it's 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 interesting because they put stuff into that mash. Cause you gotta let the you want the yeast to live as long as possible, so they can eat as much sugar, so they can produce as much ethanol as possible. 
However, yeast have a short lifespan, so it's really interesting the way that they prolong the life of the yeast so that it produces as much ethanol as possible. Mm. It's really cool, but it's all like a living organism. It's really Do they keep introducing like sugars into it to keep them? No, what they use is uh, they use a method for straight up sugar, and then they use a method for nutrients. If you just do Ooh. sugar, it's going to be a short process. But if you add other nutrients, now a lot of places will use uh, chemicals to mm-hmm. add nutrients so that the, the yeast live longer. Uh, the place that I'm um, interning, they use all natural nutrients. Like an organic process. Right. And so that the, so, and it, uh, and, and that distills uh, uh, opinion, it creates a cleaner, better tasting product. How long do they uh, age their barrels? Um, so. At least four years. Well, no, they, they actually, they actually are uh, a, a year. So they're putting out whiskey, but they're not yet putting out bourbon. Because you gotta continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a relative. Oh, yeah. So, real quick, highlight to our newbies: the distinction between the whiskey process and the bourbon. So, what, what's the one thing, one or two things that, that separate those? In that scenario, it has to be. Um, um, well, I'll take that back. There isn't really an age restriction, but the general rule is it needs to be at least two years. Okay. Uh, in, For the bourbon. bourbon. Yeah, yeah. But I think as opposed to the whiskey being what? Uh, there is no. So whiskey can come straight out of this, straight out of the, the steel. To the bottle to selling it, correct. That's okay. why corn whiskey is corn whiskey. Corn yeah. whiskey can come right out the still clear that, day. That yeah. white dog that we have, yeah, or okay. moonshine. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, still whiskey. All right, uh, but You're dropping the knowledge today, both of you, Damo and Bo, you're really dropping. Yeah. knowledge. this is the episode. If you have not tuned in to us, this is the episode you might want to start, yeah. start with because this they're giving you that backline, yeah. that background that you need. And I'll just say that the I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we could check and D, you could post this up in a minute. But I don't believe there's an official age restriction on bourbon because I because uh, I can't remember who it was, but the dude at one of these spirits conventions one time took a bucket, an oak bucket that mm-hmm. he had charred, and he took fresh still, and then he took that oak bucket across the stage and poured. And he was trying to make a point is that there's no, tell. there's no regulation. Yeah. So right now I just created bourbon. I just put it in that bucket and I dumped it. So I don't think there's an actual age, but I think the rule of thumb is two years. Now, can you guys as more seasoned in school in the bourbon process, can you tell the difference between the age? Oh, a hundred percent. Cause I, I always get the question from me newbies. Like they associate age with quality. So is there really an association with quality and age from, I, you, from your perspective, Damo and uh, Bo? I think there is, but it depends on how you're making it. Like, like the distiller I'm working with, um, they are only so they're doing it year, but they're doing they have a special process with their barrels. They're accommodating the fact that it's young with other things that they're doing. I don't give away all their secrets, yeah. so it tastes like a longer age whiskey. But things like I'll just throw this out there: Hudson Bourbon, which I don't like. Oh, I don't it's like a very that. young bourbon, yeah, it's, it's and it's just aged in a barrel, and it's, to me. Flames, yeah, it, no flavor, it's, it's just really just flames. fire up yeah. front, and you yeah. don't get any of that mellowing out. So, from you, age. so you can appreciate the quality in a nice aged bourbon, a hundred percent. And you would pay more for a nice aged bourbon. I would say, based off of what he just said, ahead, I would, that uh, it, it, apparently the age is a thing, right? But yeah. the the actual quality of the ingredients 100%. actually makes it more of a flavorful experience. So you put more, you're putting more emphasis on the quality in the ingredients as opposed to just an age on a bottle. Huh? You're putting more. You're putting more emphasis on the quality of the ingredients going into it as opposed to just the age on the bottle. I'm going to say that it's both. Both, like yes, combination. I'm going to say you I'm need say, both to I'm appreciate say, a good yes, bourbon. I'm going to say for both. it to be for yeah. for something to be like, ah, yeah, it's got to have good ingredients and a nice little age on it, and that thing will be delicious. Because I, I mean, uh, uh, speaking to like the newbies out there that have hit me back, they love our podcast, so they love the knowledge that you two guys are putting forth. They want to know, like, so what am I paying for? Right. It comes down to what so, the hell am I paying for? Is, it, this, is this bottle of alcohol worth a hundred dollars, or is it worth? Should I be paying ten dollars? Right. And then, is what is the different? What is the different? The you know the well, common denominator is it's all bourbon, right? But what is differentiating between these bottles? The age, the taste, what is it? So I think the quality ingredients is for, like anything you put in your mouth. The quality, ing- the quality ingredients <laughs> is the first issue. Like that dickle. The, is the you quality, that, when you put dickle. that dickle in your mouth. You taste the quality. As soon as I said it, as soon as I said it, as soon as I said it. Yeah, that nickel does hit different. The quality of your ingredients <laughs> is the number one. So think about this. You've had moonshine before, right? Yes, I have. That's and not you've nickel. had bad moonshine and good moonshine. Well, I mean, I only had what my dad gave me, but. So your daddy he, he, he gave stuff. me the good stuff. Right, yeah. right. So, so there's the difference in the ingredients, man. Okay. I mean, it, it starts there. 
and then the age comes into play. But then it's also about the the barrel. So if your barrel is lightly charred, medium charred, mm. heavy charred, yeah, all of that stuff plays into how it's going to taste when it comes out. So we really spark a lot of people's interest. We have to really show them this, like you know, a picture worth a thousand words. So yeah. we have to really get like a barrel, a piece of barrel, something to show these people what's going barrel. into this. You know what I mean? I can get, I can get us a so barrel. So yeah, we we can get into that. But go yeah. ahead. So uh, so I, this is the Evan Williams. Yeah. First impressions. I'm love. I'm liking this charcoal Evan filtered. Right smells great. Yeah, it smells sweet. I tasted it already. It's smoother than the dickel. Uh, that I, I, for it to be a hundred proof, mm. I think uh, I I don't know if the dickel uh, burnt everything from from my throat out, but I can tell you what this Evan is smoother than the dickel. How much is the price this it's Evan William going for? Now what, I paid, what, what site we want to use today? Now here's gonna be the thing. I want you to wait, hold off on the price. Okay. I'm gonna tell you how much I paid for all of these. Yeah, because I found a hookup hook. I found a huggy on. Getting where I but got the, my. The people want to know. I already had a good the place. people want to know. Now I got a better place. I'm not plugging you till you pay me. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey. Now we're talking. But. Now is it, we're is talking. it a local place or is it a, a place where some of our viewers in Georgia or it's a local Florida can get? Yeah, okay. It's a local so place. They, that's what they need to do. So I paid 19 for this. Yeah. I paid 24 for this. Oh, and not bad. We, and then I. 24. Paid, this is some good stuff. I like this. Williams. And then I paid. And then this is going a lot of whiskey. Whiskey connoisseurs yeah. will. will, will have it has something to say about I paid forty six for this. Mm. Now, if you Google this right now, I guarantee you'll find somebody that's selling that for hundred fifty dollars more. I saw a guy. Uh, like, we'll talk about yeah. that in a minute. And just from like the insight that you two guys are giving me, I've looked online. Somebody tried to sell me a bottle of uh, Blanche for two hundred. Yeah, they they Is will. Is that do too that. much? Hell yeah, yeah. Let me find out you getting some bootleg Blanton's. I think that's what they're trying to do. <laughs> no, well, you can a, put that seal back on anything. Bottle, right? there's a, there's Look at a, the back of it. See if it's made they in pour, China. Uh, they paint. Well, I think they would pour like something like Jack Daniels in there, and then sell, and then give you a bottle and kill tell it man. to you. You kill that man. Well, yeah. But how would I know though? Like that, as a, a newbie, like how am I? Know, how am I know if I never tasted? Like you can, if I never tasted Blanton's before though, how? Or, or if, you if never I never tasted, tasted Evan Williams, before. I never tasted Dickel, I never tasted. How would I know? You wouldn't. If you, and, and I'm assuming the only way you would do that if you were buying it for somebody for a gift. I don't yeah. know why you would ever buy it if you hadn't tasted it and buy it online. That's true. So, but, um, but there is a such thing, and that could be a whole nother episode. Oh, is, we need to get into that. That's is, the education. It's called part. the secondary market. Yeah. So that's what I have a lot of bourbons up here that I'm saving mm-hmm. because in a secondary market or day later on down the line, they might be worth a little bit more money. Like Not that I'm trying to take game. advantage of the secondary yeah. market because that's illegal oh, to sell hustle, it to sell it online. On, it's illegal. Get your hustle on bourbon brand. But locally, yeah. <laughs> there might be a demand on. for for some of these things, especially this McKenna. This is one that's special. Okay. Down the line, when you can no longer find yeah. it, uh, the prices go up. If you look at, I uh, I think I sent, I don't know if we posted it, but I sent the release of the Pappy Van Winkle line, the Buffalo mm-hmm. Trace line, and I said in that. In I'm going to put text, that on Instagram. You, I'm going to make sure we get yeah, that on Instagram for our viewers so you can see that gonna, real quick. The retail prices are kind are low. By the mm-hmm. time they get to the store and the store that knows what they got, it's going to be double to triple the price mm. and all in that. Well I ain't gonna say no names right now, but there are a lot of people on Instagram selling liquor. So if 100%. I if I go on probably the, illegal as hell. If, if I go on the on the, the, the secondary market for booze, right? Yeah. I've already come up with my scheme. Right. Go Tell us. I'm gonna call myself don't nobody steal this. I'm gonna call myself the bourbon gigolo <laughs> and all I'm selling is dickle. <laughs> <laughs> What's the price on dickle right now? With the going rate is on the, the going rate on the dickle, yeah, we need to know. Nineteen dollars. <laughs> if you want, if you want some dickle in the parking lot, forty. Remember, this dickle is eleven. <laughs> forty dollars for dickle in the parking lot. It's eleven year old. <laughs> I'm slanging dickle out my trunk under, <laughs> under the name Bourbon Gigolo. Sorry. Got you. Sorry, <laughs> I was trying to tame myself, but I couldn't. I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> I couldn't take it. The people want the demo. We want demo. <laughs> Well, I will say uh, just a couple. Again, we like want to we want to always include the reflections of our guests because that's who we do this for. The two the two things I get: um, wh- how much should I be paying for a bottle? Because the first thing they do when they call me when they're at the liquor store, they say, "Oh, the price of this is such and such is you know blank blank. Mm-hmm. Is that too much?" That's what they want to know first. Secondly, they want to know is the taste right. So what I would say is so either, that's what they want to know before they call you. You should Google the name of the bourbon, retail price. And that the, the, the distiller or whoever distributes will have what the retail price what, is. The suggested retail Suge- price. The, yeah, the suggested retail price. Yeah. And then you got to make the determination on them. They're going to the you know, the place you're getting from might have it not exactly at retail. Mm-hmm. But you got to make the determination on how much. Like, like for the blends. 
I'm taking any blend. You would yeah, any under ninety dollars, I'm buying all the blends you got on your shelf. Mm. Now the retailer is closer to fifty dollars, mm. but I know how hard it is to find. Gotcha. Oh, I'm so not paying even, anything over hundred. Mark up on the blends. Oh, 100 percent. Oh, so a, a, a true yeah. bottle of blends should only be fifty bucks. If you find a bl- bottle of blends at Costco, you better grab all of it. Buy it all because they sell it at retail. Did you hear that? Did y'all hear that? Yeah. yeah. Some of these bottles at retail, Costco had is like what they call. They I don't sell know blends at Costco. They sell all kinds of whiskey at different. Costco. You've seen blends at Costco. One hundred percent. Follow overpriced <laughs> bourbon on Instagram. My shout out, shout out, or overpriced bourbon. Shout out, overpriced bourbon. There's a dude on Instagram that tracks where all the good cheap bourbon oh. is. He was down. He they had somebody post from Waldorf the other day. We are following him today. Yeah, we and find this guy. And it basically just gives a thumbs up, thumbs down on whether or not you got a good price, and it's a good reference point. But yes, Costco does sell uh, all kinds of bourbons. <laughs> And they're in the industry. If you're a distiller, they were referred to sometimes as a loss leader because they will take a loss. Mm-hmm. They want you in there to buy a five gallon thing of ketchup. Evan Williams is good though. Evan Williams, I'm liking good. it. I'm I liking loved it. it. It didn't burn my face off. Yep. So that's. And how much again? Recast. How much did you pay for this? Twenty four. Now Evan Williams. Unless you see one on there, Evan Williams doesn't have an age statement, so we don't know how old that is. So they're going back. Three days. Your ingredients, <laughs> your ingredients, <laughs> whole bunch of thi- a whole bunch of things impact how it's going to taste. This was yeah. aged eleven years. Mm-hmm. This could have been aged as little as four. Eleven days. But you all like, but you like it better. <laughs> Say it again, Damo. Eleven days. That's what they did. <laughs> this <laughs> rolling off the shelf. Pack that truck. Sell this. Shit. Get it out of here. Get it out of here. Keep it moving. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I would pay. For, I would pay for this. I'm putting this in my. I, I do want to add this to my collection. This is some good stuff. They sell it on base. I know I got a. Uh, y'all say I got a slant toward the cheaper. <laughs> well, but well, there's some good stuff. It is, you know. I mean, I'll I'll splurge every now and then, get a bottle of Blends or some of that stuff, some of the you know, Uncle Nears, some of the other stuff. But this is some good stuff. And you said one more time, how much for the people? Twenty four nine nine. I'll None do it. That. I'll do it. Twenty five. Now I, I got that on Andrew's. And I'll say my Hennessy comparison. The president was to driving by. Thing, but just got off the plane. Yeah. Which president? Oh, the, the president? Which president? Which president? I'm just joking. Somebody got oh, that for okay. me off Andrews. Oh, I was about to say, did you cover your face up? Because of that sucker. Well, got I thought he might have said Obama, but. No. Obama ain't flying through Andrews. I have played golf at the Andrews Air Force when Base. Obama's uh, up. Yeah, well, not when Obama's up, but I saw his locker and the other president. Oh, yeah. shucks. Yeah, at the, at the base. I've seen Obama playing golf. I Well, playing for the viewers that don't know, I used to live on Andrews for a couple years. I saw Obama playing several times. Okay. Yeah, saw the Secret Service details, blocking everything off, but he was out who there. Flew, who flew down to Mar-a-Lago? Shouts out to 44. Didn't, out to Didn't get the invite. No. Right. Didn't get the invite. Now, just real quick, because we're about to drink it. And I hope not. Barrel bourbon. So, so again, this is one of their this is one of their sticks, right? This is their story. Oh, everything is single this, this barrel cash drink. Like that? It's good. This came out of barrel G656. This was bottle number 117 from that barrel. This was aged... 14 years. So the age statement has to be the youngest age that's in this bottle. Okay. So, so 14 years, Lord. And the proof is 120 proof. So it's... it's we're going to need a batch of this for the road it. before you go. We're going to need a batch of this for the road before you go. 